Well, hi everyone. Welcome to another Yukon Bot video. I thought today what I would do is uh, a little review of the uh, 2022 SeaDoo GTX 300 Limited. I've had it for about a, a month and a half now and I've had some time on it. I've only got about 15 hours on it though, uh, not a ton of time, but I feel I can talk about it a little bit because it's very similar to the last machine I had, which was the 2018 GTX 300 Limited. And on that machine, I had it over four years, just sold that a little while ago. I put uh, over 200 hours on that machine, so roughly about 50 hours each season on it. So quite a, quite a bit of distance on that machine, and now I've got the new 300 GTX Limited. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today, just give you a little look at the machine, um, and then I'll give you some perspectives on how it operates, and then hopefully put the drone up in the air and just give you a little bit of a perspective of what it looks like on the water, slow and uh, hopefully fast too, if the drone can keep up. So this machine, I ordered it in uh, 2021, the summer of 2021. It took a year for the machine to get here. It uh, arrived around the end of April and I couldn't pick it up until the very early part of June because like many of you, these machines have been waiting for electronic uh, parts, modules, instrumentation, and there's a lot of c sitting at dealerships all around the country, and I know a lot of you very anxious to get your machines and get them on the water. They may be in, they may be at the dealership, but many of them are waiting parts to be put into them so that they can be used on the water, and I can understand how frustrating that experience is if, you, if you're waiting for it, you know it's there, but you still can't get it. But on uh, the internet, I am seeing more and more people who are getting delivery of their machines all the time, so that's a good thing. So let's talk about this machine. It's not that much different from the uh, 2018 GTX 300. The difference is primarily in the electronics of it. It has a, a big wide 7.8 inch uh, crystal liquid display uh, LCD um, dashboard. That's the primary difference of it. The hull, the engine, pretty much the same. But this is a beautiful machine. It's sort of considered the upscale of all the Sea-Doo's, uh, the Cadillac version, if you like. It has the horsepower of 300 horses in about 11 and a half feet. So lots of horsepower, lots of, lots of power underneath that engine, but it also has all the luxury comforts. It's, uh, so this particular machine, the 300 2022 GTX Limited, comes in two colors. It comes in a color called Sage Green, and the other one is liquid titanium. This is the liquid titanium color. This is the one I preferred. Uh, it's kind of a, uh, a dark gray with a black finish to it. One thing I have noticed about it is it's a little more difficult to keep clean than the silver model I had before. Uh, this just seems to show the watermarks. I think anything time you get into those sort of dark, dark colors, harder to keep it a little bit clean, and that's no different with this one. I really have to kind of wipe it down afterwards and wipe all the watermarks off or they'll, they'll show up on it. So it takes a little more effort to keep this one clean, but this is the color that, uh, that I preferred. This is the cargo hatch. It just lifts right up. This is a, a thing that is a, a trademark for sea -Doo and that a lot of people really love because it allows you to be on the seat and you can get right into that front cargo bin there. You can be seated and reach right in there and get anything out that you need from the front cargo bin. It's got a cargo organizer inside of that bin that comes with the 300 GTX Limited. Allows you to just kind of compartmentalize things, keep track of them a little bit better. And a beautiful sound system on this machine. It's uh, the premium sound system and I tell you it really does sound terrific on the water. It's all Bluetooth linked to your cell phone, to either Android or um, Apple CarPlay and uh, the sound system is absolutely incredible in it. I hardly ever use it. I just don't have the music on all that much. It's just not my thing. Occasionally cruising around, I'll have the music on, but not all that much. But the sound system, believe me, is fantastic. And with the new sea now, it also has a responsive sort of audio system in that when you speed up on the sea if you're if you've got the sound system on, it'll adjust the sound depending on the speed that you're going to compensate for the noise of the engine and just the air noise around you. So it has that feature built into it as well. And I have to show you, not show you, I have to let you listen just briefly to the sound that comes out of the audio system on the sea I can't play it for very long because of copyright issues with sea uh, and all of or not with sea but with uh, YouTube. And uh, I'll just play a little bit, crank it up a little bit, just to give you an idea of what the sound is like. So let me just crank this up a little bit. Next song. So 
I can't play it very long or we're going to get some kind of copyright infringement, but the sound is really good out of it. And as I said, you can control it down there with the controls down there, or you can just uh, use these up and down volumes here or forward and back, that sort of thing. Once you've got the BRP app linked into your cell phone and uh, it's plugged in, it'll also work with Bluetooth. But uh, the sound system is really, really good. As I said before, I don't use it all that much, but when you want to have it out here, it's a really, really nice sound, beautiful sound. This particular model, the GTX, uh, comes in three different versions. There is a uh, 170 horsepower engine, there is a 230 horsepower engine, and then there's the top of the line, the 300 horsepower engine, which requires premium fuel. So keep that in mind that uh, it can get pretty expensive to refuel these things on the water when you're paying for premium fuel, particularly on the water. In Canada, I've paid as much as $2.65 a liter for fuel on the water. Those prices have come down now, thankfully, but uh, it can get pretty expensive when you're putting premium fuel in on the water. So I always try to do that on land as much as possible, but sometimes you're just out there and you need to top up at a marina, even though you can carry some extra fuel with you. Um, you just have to do that on the water sometimes and you have to be prepared to pay those kinds of prices. Some of the smaller engines don't require the premium fuel. In terms of modifications that I've done to the machine, not really that many. I have uh, added a, uh, a cell phone holder right on the front of the machine, right here, that holds my cell phone. It's just a RAM mount onto a, a, a ball mount, and then that just holds the cell phone in place. That works really well. Cell phone does not get wet out there. It sits out there just perfectly and doesn't have any problems. But uh, if you're worried about that, inside there is a glove box. And you can lift that up and inside the glove box there's a waterproof compartment in there and in that waterproof compartment you can put your cell phone in there uh, there's a bit of foam padding for the cell phone and on the limited model there is a usb power supply to it so you can power your cell phone all day long it'll never run dead you can plug it into the usb port cover it up inside there and your cell phone will never get wet your, your stereo system will run off of that and you don't have to have the cell phone out i have the cell phone out because i like to use the uh, navionics app for navigation on uh, the cell phone and use that as my primary navigation haven't quite totally got used to the navigation from brp yet from their system that you, just shows up on the lcd display it's to me it's just a little bit far away to see um, and it's just not as detailed as I'd like as I, as I get on the Navionics. So I'm probably for now going to be sticking with the Navionics. I may be adding a GPS unit that you can add to the mirrors on this sea -Doo. There's a touch screen now, Garmin GPS unit, builds right into the mirror on the sea -Doo, And it's a much bigger display. And I think I'm going to order one of those so I have full navigation right there. And that'll be a much easier to be, bigger screen easier to see easier to reach and touch and i think it'll just be a little bit better so i've got one of those on order it's about fourteen hundred dollars from brp and uh i'll build that into the to the wire in and and build it into the mirror and i think that'll be my primary navigation going forward but that's uh something that uh, has yet to come in that could be even for next summer we'll see so let's talk about a couple of the features of the sea -Doo. It has uh, IDF. IDF is the Intelligent uh, Debris Free System, which is something that came out on sea -Doo on some models last year. It's standard on this machine, on the Limited. And Intelligent Debris Free allows you to disengage the engine from forward and put it into a reverse mode. You do that by actually shutting the engine off, pressing a button. It then engages into the reverse mode and uh, it allows you to put a little bit of throttle. I think it will last for about 15 seconds in that reverse mode. And if you've got your intake grate or anything clogged inside uh, the, around the uh, impeller, you may, you may be able to reverse it, spit it all back out without having to go to shore, climb underneath the machine or try to turn the machine on its side, which is almost impossible with one person, but uh, get under, you know, prevent you from having, from having to get underneath to pull the debris out. This intelligent debris free, free system puts the engine into reverse, turns the impeller the other way and it's supposed to clear it. Now they had problems with that and I have yet, to be honest with you, to try it. I have not tried it yet and uh, I don't know how it's gonna work. I, I think that they fixed most of the problems with that and I'm not hearing a lot of problems, but I am still hearing a few problems with that. So be aware of that. Um, I think it works pretty good. Those who, who have used it say they love it. It saved their, 
their bacon a few times. So I'll try that at some point down the road, but that's available. And then the other thing, of course, is uh, IBR, the intelligent brake and reverse. So if you're going at speed and you hit the brake, it'll drop down that chute over top of the back end of the grate, and it'll help stop you very, very quickly in the water. And then it's got, of course, the reverse, too, where you can put it in reverse just by holding the, 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 uh, the accelerator. You can click it into reverse, and then it'll, it'll be able to back up and turn around and all of that. So very, very maneuverable. Now, the other thing I should mention that uh, was a big attraction to me in moving to this particular model is the fuel tank got bigger. It went from 60 liters on the previous model that I had to 70 liters on this model. So it'll hold 70 liters of fuel. That extra 10 liters sometimes can make quite a difference. It's just nice having that on board, particularly with a 300 horsepower engine that can suck fuel up uh, pretty quickly if you're moving at speed. I tend, for the most part, to not use all the speed this machine can deliver. I'm not a kind of a racing guy. I like to keep it down to 60. 55, 60, somewhere around that 5,000 RPM mark before the supercharger is always kicked in, which is where all your fuel gets burned. If you keep it down below that, the mileage is not all that bad. If you go up above 70, you know, you're cruising at 70, 80, 90, 100 kilometers an hour, you're going to burn a lot of fuel. But just having that extra 10 liters on board in the fuel tank is really a good thing, and uh, I'm, I'm glad I've got that. I added a couple of little things on here. There's a couple of clips on here, kind of a little bar. But I always found that that bar never works very well in terms of, tr terms of trying to put a, a clip or a carabiner, carabiner on there. So I've just tied a rope on there. I have this little rope that I tie on here, and then I can just clip my uh, carabiner onto there. And I have a rope here if I'm docking or tying up that I can just use that. And I have one on each side for that. So that seems to work pretty well. Just a rope that's tied on there, and the ends have been melted off so it doesn't fray. And that's just quick and easy and allows me to very quickly attach a line either to uh, the port or the uh, the starboard side. So I do shoot a lot of video and uh, I have added some things to the Sea-Doo to help me do that. I've put uh, these GoPro mounts. I have one here on this mirror. I have one right up top with a little bit of a pole mount on the top to give it a little bit of elevation. You can mount a camera there. Of course you can turn those cameras around and mount them any way you want. And then on the other mirror I've got another mount on this side as well. So one two, three. This mount here is what I use for the Skydio drone. There's a beacon controller that goes in here, and then you can control the Skydio drone from there. Might try that a little later, we'll see. But those are the camera mounts that I have. And then of course on the very back, when I have the cooler, the link cooler with me, which attaches back there, I have another camera mount on there. So I can put a camera there and shoot from that direction as well. So those are the modifications for, for the camera mounts that are uh, attached to the sea -Doo. In terms of other modifications, I've just got a, a couple of things that are gonna be coming in shortly. What I've ordered from Riva Racing is some new Sponsons. And I never had them on my past sea -Doo. The 2018 for four years, I never really noticed uh, that I needed them, but I've had a couple people say they're supposed to be pretty good in terms of uh, helping the sea -Doo track straight through the water or also turn quickly in the water. And there's a couple of different settings for those sponsons, which go right, you can't quite see it because it's under the water line, but your sponsons are right back here. There's one on each side. Those are the standard ones there that come with the sea -Doo, but the Riva Performance ones, allow you to turn a lot more quickly, precisely, tightly, and also track straight when you're in a wake behind another boat. Helps you track nice and straight. So what I'm going to do is put those on and try it. I have no idea how that's going to be. Some people love them. Other people say it takes a bit to get used to them. So I've added those, or I will be adding those when they arrive. I don't know when that's going to be. It's supposed to be towards the end of July, but it could be a little bit uh, kicked back because of delays. So we'll see. But I'll try those out, and then we'll do a whole video on that and let you guys know how that is. This is the link system on the back of the Sea-Doo. This is, I guess, one add-on that I've got on. Sea-Doo now makes a, an accessory that uh, will give you a, a link extension platform, which is what this is. I ordered this out of the United States, but Sea-Doo now makes one. It allows you to bring two link products, and you can attach them through these link connection points right here. Instead of uh, the standard model, just has the one link atta attachment point. This now with the platform gives you the ability to put another one on. These link attachments are really simple. They just click in and out 
off and on. You could put the cooler up front. You could have this on the back. Um, gas tank, they have a gas tank that uh, carries, I think, 14 liters, another 14 liters that you can bring with you. So all of these things are easy to pop off and on with the link attachment system. And that just works right off the back of the sea here. And those things are secure. I've never had any problem with them bouncing loose or moving around or shifting. They're locked in there. They're great. On the very back of the sea there's a boarding ladder. This ladder just pops down into the water. You can get your knee on that, get your hand up on there somewhere, pull yourself up out of the water, the back of the sea -Doo. When you're an older guy like me though, <laughs> and weigh a little more than you should, it's not as easy as if you're 25 or 30 years old popping out of the water onto that. It takes a little effort, I'll be honest with you, but you can do it. You just get on the back, get your knee on there, get a hand up on the back of the machine, pull yourself out of the water. I like to get where it's a little shallower and do it there. But if you want to jump off in the middle of the lake, that's great too. So you can see if you have the, this off, the back seat off, you've got a really big platform on the back here for uh, swimming, uh, relaxing. You can actually take this back seat off, lay up against the front seat, have your legs hanging over the water there. There's a lot of room on the back of that platform just for uh, taking in the sun and uh, just using it as a bit of a relaxation bed. Two sets of controls on the steering column. This side here controls the VTS. Uh, there's a mode setting here for sports mode, eco mode, and normal mode. Um, this controls the v VTS up and down. Over on this side, there's uh, controls to link other apps in, like the Wave app, W-A-V-V-E. -E. It's another app for navigation that you can load through BRP. Uh, you can control your speaker, your sound, toggle through all your, your screen here. The screen is one big screen, but when you turn it on, it looks like there's a screen on the right and a screen on the left. So it gives you sort of two screens. One is all your sort of telemetry information about um, what the sea is doing, the speed, the RPM, water conditions, temperature, depth, all of that sort of stuff. And then the other side is all of your information uh, regarding your phone connection, your music system, your maps, your navigation, that sort of thing. Pretty easy to see. I think it has two settings for color, one dark mode, one light mode, and it adjusts to the light around you automatically. Should also mention that you have speaker controls right here too. You can turn the volume up and down, change tracks right from here, or you can do it off the handlebar. The other option you get with the Sea-Doo is on this particular model, it has the connection for, what do they call it? A tow bar rope. You can put a bar down in there, hook it in, lock it in, and the bar stands up about so high and you can hook on a, a ski rope to it if you're pulling water skiers that sort of thing you can hook that bar system in there and uh, tow water skiers behind the the, the sea do no problem if you're towing a tube or something like that there's a connection point back here you probably can't see it all that well because it's underneath the case here and i've got a little rope on there for a third connection for a rope if i need to tie up to shore but there is a there is a connection point right here and you would use that connection point if you're going to be towing uh you know one of those rubber tubes or something like that uh, you use that one and then the other one is for towing uh, water skiers i've added a couple of decals onto my CU, just a canadian flag yukon crest on each side i've uh put the Yukon Bob YouTube uh, decal on here. It doesn't show up as well on the gray as it did on my silver one, but uh, it's there. A couple of other little decals and things like that, but for the most part, it's uh, just the way it came from uh, the factory, with the exception of the camera mounts and the add-ons. I will be putting a few more add-ons with the Sponsons once they get in. And I'm also going to add on to it a uh, what they call a catch can. I don't know whether I need it for sure or not. It's a it's a an aftermarket item that uh, I'm going to add on to it from Riva uh, Performance uh, Racing. And what it does is it catches all sort of the, the 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 crud that comes off the crankcase in terms of oil vapors and things like that. Normally those things, uh, because of environmental reasons, get cycled back through the engine. Sometimes they can build up in the uh, supercharger and in the intercooler and give you a bit of crud in there. So this has a little diversion where the hose goes into this little catch can that has an air breather on top and you just once in a while empty this little catch can so that all that sort of crud and debris winds up there and not back into the engine. It's supposed to help a little bit with uh, keeping the engine clean 
Some people who, who know more about this than I do tell me, well, it's really only for people who are using their machines in a high performance way, running super fast all the time, not so much for the type of cruising that I'm doing. But I thought, you know what, I'm going to put it on anyway and give it a try and just see, see what it's like. And then I can kind of report back to you on whether it's a, a necessary thing or not. Another little feature I want to show you is that this whole handlebar assembly here is adjustable. So if you want to stand and drive your sea doo there's a bar here. If I can do this with one hand, this is kind of tricky with one hand. Anyway, I can't quite do it, but there's a little lever here that allows you to lift this whole thing up and down in about three or four different positions. So if you're standing and you want to kind of not have to be bent over, you can lift the whole handlebar thing up, just a little lever down there, and then you pull the handlebar up and then you can click it back. It's just like a bit of a, I guess a bit of a ratchet system in there, and uh, that works pretty well. Don't use it all the time, but yeah, if you're going to be standing for a long period of time, you might want to raise your handlebars up so you don't have to bend down as far to, to reach the handlebars. Kind of a neat feature. The seats are really easy to remove. Not so much with a camera in your hand, but that's it. Just a couple of little buttons to click. That seat pops right off. And then if you come up here, there's a couple of other buttons. One button there, you just take that and you can remove this seat as well. So both seats are off. This gives you access to the engine compartment. You can check the coolant levels, the fuse box is in here, the dipstick for the oil is right there, the filler for the oil is right there. But in order to do an oil change on this, if you're one of those people who likes to do it themselves, you're gonna to have to take this rear deck off the back, remove all those screws, take that deck off, because you'll need to do that in order to get into the access, the oil filter and you'll have to take all of that apart and then put it all back together. And in the case of a sea -Doo, the oil has to be sucked out of it with a suction pump through the dipstick because you can't obviously just drain it, so it has to be sucked out. So I'm sitting on uh, the second seat now, and if you're a passenger, you've got these uh, handlebars on each side that you can hang on to, and that uh, also gives you a pretty good uh, pretty good seating position plus there's a little strap here you can hang on to this as well so it's pretty comfortable back here not bad and for the rider you have these uh, ergonomic knee pads one on each side and these allow you to kind of lock your your knees in here have your feet in the the wells right up there your back is supported by the little back rest on the back of the driver's seat and it's pretty comfortable you can kind of get locked in here pretty well so you can kind of lean control the machine keep your knees locked in a little bit to give you more flexibility and turning and on the corner so you don't get chucked off the machine and uh, yeah this seat is pretty comfortable not bad at all I really like it this by the way is if you don't know this is where you feel the uh, sea -Doo. you lift up that top lid there and your filling point is right there. You have to be a little bit careful here that you got everything kind of below this whole line level here because this bar has to come down and everything locks water tight here so you can't have stuff sticking up like that or over the edge or cords or cables because you're going to cut them if you have anything here because that comes down with quite a bit of force to make that watertight seal but uh, Still lots of room in there. If you keep things down low, you'll be fine. So let's get off the land and let's get out onto the water. I just wanted to give you a couple of views of the sea 300 GTX Limited from the water and also from the air so you can get a sense of what it looks like on the water.
So just a quick little review, overview if you like, of the 2022 300 GTX Limited with about 15 hours on it now. So I hope you enjoyed the review. You can go into a lot more detail than I did and uh, I'm sure there's other places where you can find even more detail out there. But that's just my quick little perspective on the GTX 300. Hope you enjoyed the review and we will see you guys out on the water somewhere on the next Yukon Bob video. Till then, stay safe and we'll see you next time.